All right, hello and welcome. I want to talk about how to break into Nightmare from Insane. Uh, I'll go over what to do to hit 70 after you finish the Insane campaign, how to set up your hero deck in terms of stat priority, weapons, and gear. I'll do a live playthrough of the Deeper Well and Ancient Minds on Nightmare Campaign, and after that I'll lay out what I think is the best thing to do in order to um, set yourself up for a really strong start beyond that point into Nightmare. Essentially Nightmare is mid-game, it's kind of a long haul. I have chapters set up on the video and uh, timestamps in the description, so feel free to skip around. When you first finish the Insane Campaign, you'll probably be about... 55, 58, 60, somewhere in there, maybe a little lower depending on how much of the campaign you played through with Hardcore enabled, maybe a little higher if you uh, broke off and did some other things throughout. Um, to hit 70, you've got a handful of options here. You can uh, get in and do some survival. You can uh, do some of the challenges. They're a little bit different. Uh, they're interesting. Mixed mode is sort of a harder version of survival, and pure strategy is a, an easier mode of survival, kind of. You're not involved. Your hero is not involved in pure strategy. It's just your defenses. Or you could jump into the browser and see what's going on with some games online, jump in and play with other players. Um, it's up to you. I do suggest that you go back into the campaign and do some runs of Alk Labs and uh, Deeper Well uh, to get some accessories. If you have some open slots still, you can get brooches from Alchemical Labs, uh, bracers from Throne Room, and monocles from the Summit. I think the best thing to do um, in terms of efficiency and overall benefit is to farm the Summit Insane Campaign Hardcore. You'll get some loot, you'll get some gold, You'll get a bunch of XP, about a million XP and 250k gold somewhere in there per run. And uh, you'll you'll get some gemstones, which are nice to have, and they'll be pets for you to slot in to that empty slot if you don't run survival. All that said, it's up to you however you choose to hit 70. It's your personal choice. Just, I would suggest not going crazy farming gear. Technically, the best gear is going to come from mix mode either Glitter Helm or the Summit, uh, for whatever reason they have the same loot modifier, but you're not going to need to go crazy farming gear to break into Nightmare. Uh, you'll see that I do this with some, some pretty low stats. So in terms of, well, my hero deck here, I've got an Apprentice, Huntress, Monk, and EVA. I think the EVA is the better choice for walls here. She's got a little more to offer. Uh, we were all running a Squire for walls uh, for Spike Blockades in 1.0. I think the EVA is the better choice these days. So I'm in campaign gear, insane campaign gear, on my apprentice here, 275 as a grand total for my defense stats here. His gear is nothing special. You really don't need much to get this done. I do have a DPS weapon on him to, to deal some damage, and I've got a speedy gemstone from the insane summit to help support my towers. He's going to be our active hero. We're going to go in and play the active waves on him. 220 for power, 140 for defense rate, 85 for range. What I'm going in here with, only 30 fortify. You don't need fortify. Your towers really shouldn't be getting hit. Um, somewhere between 2 to 1 and 4 to 3 in terms of power to rate ratio is good. DSTs. DPS is optimized at 2, two to 1, and uh, Flame Burst DPS is optimized at 4 to 3. Somewhere between there is just fine. 85 range. I don't know. It just felt good to have 85 range. These are, these are the stats that I ended up with um, coming out of the campaign. You'll need some, some money, to uh, some gold, to max out the gear, which is hopefully what you'll get when you grind whatever you do to uh, hit 70. And uh, for my Waller EV here, I've got 250 for pow for Fortify, I've got 250, uh, 100 power, 50 for range and defense rate. She's going in a bit lighter here with stats. Her grand total is sitting at 450. Um, I want you to be able to replicate this as, uh, as easily and smoothly as possible. So I'm going in with lower stats than you would have. Ideally, you would have a lot more room power to work with here because my apprentice that I'm basing all of my stat numbers off of is 58, you'd be 70. You'd have more stats to get this done. So the, uh, the Waller EV here, the power, range, and rate, they're just going to be to make more use of the buff beam to make it a little more worthwhile to put buff beams on your towers. Um, traps and auras, I'm going in even lighter here. 350 for the stat total on my aura monk here 150 on range that's going to be the main stat bigger auras are better and that defense rate you really can kind of go lighter on because defense rate doesn't really do anything for ensnare and strength train auras and for the trap hunters 100 for fortify power and range 
50 for defense rate. Again, defense rate, not very useful in terms of a, a stat. In my opinion, at least compared to fortify power and range, this is what I'm, I'm going to go in with here. I do think the apprentice with a gemstone pet is going to be the optimal hybrid to play in order to deal damage. Um, I've got comparable weapons for my huntress and monk. They were pretty underwhelming, even though the number for ranged DPS is far higher on the, the monk here, and it's higher on this, this paintball gun here that I got from Summit. Um, on the Huntress, uh, you, you can see here that it says 2709 for range DPS, so the monk should be the highest. Let's just check it out. He is at 23k here, about 21k, something like that. The uh, Huntress here is sitting at 21k, 20k boosted. She's going to be doing even better here boosted. She's at 45k here, 43k, something like that. Uh, for the Apprentice, 46. I don't know why it's higher. I really don't get it. Um, he is at lower attack than the other two are. He's at 25. The uh, Huntress is at 50, and the, the Monk's at 55. In theory, they should be doing more damage. The Apprentice does. This weapon, not that special. I've got better weapons. This weapon here, 3600. It would do even more damage. I'm going to go in with the weaker weapon. I'm assuming that you didn't maybe get lucky and find it a good one, but uh, what I would suggest doing if you want to find a good weapon is when you're running Summit, um, the victory chests, pop them with your apprentice. Um, you'll get staves. Just get a few and find the one that has the highest base physical damage and level that one. That'll give you the most damage. And, uh, you know, you'll get some gear if you run Summit too. This is what I got in terms of gear. This is the stuff that you want to see here. Um, you know, more the more defense stats, the better. But um, this is what I'm going to go in with. And I'm going to use the Apprentice as my hybrid here. Um, what I can do here is la lay down some towers. They'll get the active builder bonus from him being out on the field. That's a 33% damage bonus. I've got the speedy gemstone going here, increasing their fire rate, and I can overdrive them for even more fire rate here. So we're going to get a lot out of running the apprentice on top of him having the best ranged damage for whatever reason with his staff. So he's going to be effective as a hybrid character. In terms of where I actually put my points when I leveled all this stuff for the weapon here, I've got ranged damage as the primary stat, but I made sure to level projectile count until it was maxed at five projectiles for this staff. And uh, it's that's true for any staff. You don't have to sweat which specific staff you get. The attack rate is the main thing, ranged attack rate. And uh, 0.38 ranged attack rate is gonna be the attack rate for every staff. They all have the same attack rate, but you wanna make sure you get five projectiles and you level up ranged damage now for the speedy gemstone i went into power as my tower stat here just to unlock the bonus defense rate and max defenses you need at least level 11 of a max upgrade here in order to get that second defense that's what you need as a bare minimum and then you want to level up the bonus whatever it's going to be as much as you can for the gear here I prioritized my defense stats, didn't go into armor at all, don't really care about that right now. Uh, mainly power here for the gear, and uh, you know, that's that's going to be the main stat here for him. A bit of the other stuff from when I was leveling this stuff throughout the, uh, the campaign when I was playing. Um, in terms of this stuff, it's more or less the same deal here. I've got a bit of fortify on here, not sure why <laughs> that's not optimal. but. Um, you know, power and uh, a bit of range and defense rate going to be fine. However you split it up, it's up to you. But that's how I leveled my gear on my apprentice. And essentially, I would do the same thing um, on the other characters here. Fortify and power for the EV and uh, so on and so forth for the other characters and their gear. All right, so I'm going to jump into it here. I'm going to go in and play um, Campaign Nightmare deeper well and ancient mines i'm gonna turn hardcore mode off you don't need hardcore mode on if you're just progressing through the campaign i would suggest ticking that off we'll use that later on when we're farming survival for gear and gold and xp and all that all right first things first let's jump into deeper well and get this rolling here fortunately for wave one we don't have a build timer so we can take our time here setting things up i'm going to start off with the ev and i'm going to go about a tile and a half away from the stairs here and uh, drop the first note of my wall here on this crack kind of a tile and a half away from the stairs i'm going to stretch a 5du wall all the way down here and uh, just kind of cut in a little bit um, about a tile's worth of width i'm going to cut in and that'll be a 5 du ev wall i'm going to do the same thing over here a bit of a gap against the rock 
and um, I'm gonna cut into this uh, the stairwell and a little bit and toward the other wall about a tile width and uh, starting the first note about a tile and a half away from the stairs that's gonna bring these two notes close enough together for me to tie them together with a 4DU buff beam that is going to put some armor on them here 20% on each that'll be nice to help them stay alive and I'm going to swap over to my apprentice I'm going to save that 30 mana and get things rolling here we've got some spiders I'm going to take them out with my staff here plenty of damage to do that now you want to stay safe and uh, try to take them out from a distance but since we don't have hardcore enabled if I get hit and I die it really doesn't matter that much I'm just gonna come back and respawn that's exactly why we don't want hardcore enabled because you're pretty fragile going in here without any armor since I'm um, since I'm relying solely on my damage on my staff and I don't have any defenses I have to kind of run around and kill everything myself and we've got an ogre here the where he spawns is random so he came out of that side. Uh, it might be different for you. Um, if you get hit by a snowball, you're going to get one shot. If you have stats like mine, the placement on the walls here is very specific. It's going to prevent him from cleaving with his club against the crystal. You can see that he can't quite reach it here with his club. That is what we want. And I'm going to use this mana here to set up a magic missile. That's going to do some damage. Now I could stand on the crystal and repair this wall a little bit. He might throw a snowball at you. You got to be ready for that and jump. Otherwise, you'll get one shot. So I'm going to repair up here. And uh, there's a trick to repairing faster. If you hit E, then hold R. Not sure if this is intended or not, but it repairs things a little faster. I'm out of mana, so I'm going to go find some mana if I can. Rip. There you go. That one shot. Um, yeah, there's a little bit of mana here. Uh, my magic missile is going to do some damage here. I'm going to get the rest of that mana, and I'm going to start doing damage myself as well. I'm going to boost this tower here to get a little more out of it. I've got the gemstone on it as well here. And uh, I'm going to do some damage. This might take a minute, but he's got a lot of HP. Um, he'll go down eventually. So we're going to just sit here and do some damage. I just instinctively jump when I see those snot balls coming out. I've got a few more mana to repair this wall if I need to. Obviously, you wouldn't be wasting as much time as I was looking at his cleave range. And uh, you'd be able to get this done a little quicker. Um, you know, the wall is fine here. I'll just pump this mana into it. I don't really see any other mana around. But uh, this is essentially the strategy here. We're turtling up and uh, we're taking out this ogre at a, a nice slow pace with our magic missile boosted with our uh, gemstone here. I could have been boosting it a little more actively, but I, uh, I forgot all about it. So I'm going to sell that now. Now we've got a build timer. We've got some mana here. So I'm going to set up a, a DST here and I'm going to aim it so that it shoots down every lane, essentially. It's got some vision on each of the lanes here. I'm going to throw down... A uh, flame burst here as well. Just aim straight out. And then I'm going to swap over to our EV and drop an, uh, an, a reflect wall here. This is going to protect us from ogre snot balls. And the spiders aren't going to be able to get us from back here as well. You know, you could throw some more stuff down here if you wanted to. Um, it's up to you. Uh, I guess I've got time for uh, an ensnare order maybe. Or not an ensnare, a strength drain. Not quite. So I'm going to hang out. I'll just repair up a little. I got a, I got a helmet in my uh, my inventory there. I'm going to repair the walls up a little bit here. And uh, then I'm going to hide, basically. I'm just going to make sure the walls are healthy enough to take a bit of a beating. We're going to have another ogre or two at this wave. I can't really remember. But the towers, now that they're up and running, we've got some damage on the field. You don't really have to worry about killing everything yourself now. A flame burst and a DST are going to do a ton of work for you and uh, be just fine. You can see the spider trying to web the towers there unsuccessfully. Not quite going to work with that reflect wall. And we can hide now. We can hide back here. That reflect wall is going to bounce back the snout balls. And uh, I've got the speedy gemstone on these two towers here. I'll overdrive them for even more damage. You can see that the ogre is taking quite a bit of damage. He's not going to put up nearly the fight that the, uh, the other ogre did for wave one. I'm just going to run around and collect some mana here to uh, repair, some, some, repair the walls and, and build some more towers and whatnot. Down goes the ogre. We've got some more spiders coming in here. Not worried about them. Uh, the reflect wall, gonna do a ton of work here. Um, already, uh, well, one projectile reflected. I saw it do at least two, but the spiders are gonna try and fail to uh, do some damage to the towers here. Um, they may take a shot or two at them in melee range, but they're not gonna be able to web them. You don't want towers to get webbed. It slows their attack speed down a lot so you want to prevent that it'll, it'll also do some damage to them i think either way you don't want towers to be webbed so now now i'm going to drop a buff beam on these towers here 
uh, just a 4 you buff beam. And it looks like I can fit another Flame Burst back there for some more damage. Now, that's going to be a ton of damage here. Uh, that's going to be plenty. You can, I know you can't really see. I guess I should just do it like that so you can see. I'm just hitting all the lanes here. And I like the idea of a Strain 3 or 2 in the lane, so I'll drop... Um, so it's just barely hitting the buff beam. We'll get a little more range. Do I have time for this? Ooh, not quite. Not quite. Next wave. We're looking good here. Uh, we've got three towers dealing some damage here. And everything's going to come in and just get killed pretty quickly. The, uh, the two flame bursts and the DST, that's a lot of damage. So we don't have to worry about any of these enemies from this point. I don't think... Um, if you played it safer than, uh, than I did in the beginning, you could get away with not dying. You could farm this on uh, hardcore for a bit of gear if you wanted to. But I don't think it's really necessary. So we've got two ogres now here, and uh, everything can shoot the ogres. Um, even on that far right lane, everything reaches still, the DST included. I'm just going to pop out and check the health here. Oh, yeah, we're looking good. Um, you know, in terms of upgrade priority here, you could do the buff beam on the towers. You could do the buff beam on the walls for a little more armor. That's up to you. Um, I, you know, the, my stats are pretty low here, and... Um, we're holding up pretty good, so it doesn't really matter, in, in my opinion, what you upgrade here. I just, I got lucky in terms of that strength drain. Just so happened that both ogres came out of that side, and uh, I'm going to drop another strength drain on this side here. Just enough of a, uh, just far enough over to make sure it hits the buff beam to give it a little more range. That's nice. That looks good. Now from here, I don't know, you can do whatever you like. Um, I'm going to throw out some traps. I think infernos will be fine. Uh, now let's do... Let's do explosives. Sure. Explosives. Um, and explosive. For now. Didn't quite have time. You know, if you, were, if you weren't talking and stuff like I am, you'd have more time to put things down. Got some gear in my inventory there. That's pretty cool. I have my loot filters set to 18 upgrades max, or minimum, and um, rare and epic gear. So I'll just check my inventory and see what I actually got here. That explosive trap is just going to help kill some of the lesser enemies and take a bit of the heat off of my flame burst and my DST there. Plenty of mana in the lanes here now. A lot of snot balls flying around, bouncing off the reflect wall there. That reflect wall is putting in some serious work, but it's not counting the projectiles properly. It says two reflected. Not sure what's going on there. Quick repair on that. It's looking good. I've got some mana saved up so I can drop upgrades for quick repairs if I want to, but you can see that I haven't upgraded anything yet. There is a snot ball rip. But uh, yeah, I've got plenty of mana here to play with, and I haven't really needed to put it into anything yet. The uh, towers are doing just fine back there on the buff beam behind the reflect wall. It's pretty low pressure at this point. Rip! Oh my god. <laughs> he got me in midair. Bad news. So uh, I'll try to get to my tower stack here and boost them. And uh, get the gemstone on them for some uh, big deeps. And I'll just... I'll plug away at some shots here but yeah you can see the builds it's holding up i mean you know you don't need much in terms of um stats to make this happen here i think what what catches a lot of people off guard is that wave one ogre and it's it's hard to deal with if you're not ready for it so uh, that makes sense um maybe i'll do i'll do another trap here yeah i've got an explosive over there i'll do one over here as well and uh i don't know we've got seven du let's do i don't know maybe uh let's do a healing aura why not those are fun, right? And then back on the Apprentice, I've got 5 DU left. I'm not really sure what to do with it. All kinds of stuff going into my inventory right now. But, you know, what, you don't need a, a whole lot. I guess I could do ensnares in each lane, too. Maybe. Um, I don't know. I could do an Electric Aura to uh, help deal with these spiders a little bit more. But I don't know how much that would benefit me, really. But you can just kind of hang out and uh, boost boost your towers. Now, another choice for your active hero, if you weren't concerned with dealing damage, say you're in the later waves at that point, is the monk. The uh, tower boost is nice. If you've got a bit of skill on your monk, it's going to increase the damage on your towers. You could throw a gemstone on him and essentially just stand here and boost um, your towers with him as well. So you've got some options in terms of the active hero. Quite a few ogres coming down the lanes here. Now, I'm just going to pop some upgrades on my walls and uh, I guess I'll upgrade the buff beam since we're almost done here. I'm sitting on a lot of mana. A few upgrades on the buff beam. And uh, 
couple upgrades around on the towers. Why not help kill these ogres a bit faster here? And I'll just pop out, see how the walls are doing. They're doing just fine. You can see how the walls are doing from the comfort of your uh, tower stack too. 47k, 45k or so. 40, 45k. Yeah. So uh, that's the last ogre there going down pretty quickly. That's going to be the victory here for Deeper Well. So that's how you can do it. That's one build that works. I still have five to you left over. You could have done whenever you like with that. Pop in the chest here, just seeing what I've got. Um, in terms of gear, it looks like some epic gear here, level 21. So that's a little bit higher than the stuff that you'd be typically finding on... Oh, 20, I got a legendary. Wow, how about that? Check that out. So you can get some decent gear here, better gear. Um, you could you could farm uh, this if you wanted to for gear. But we're going to move on and uh, keep it rolling here. And we're going to move on to the Ancient Mines. All right, next up, Ancient Mines. Um... Kind of the same game plan here. I'm going to wall it off with some towers and a buff beam and whatnot. Um, I guess let's let's start with let's start with the walls. Um, I have builds for the Ancient Mines um, in Nightmare uh, Survival. I'm going to kind of do something similar. So if you've seen that video, maybe you know what I'm up to. A couple of 5D walls. Uh, I, I started this one at that little rock here, this little round rock that's um, at the base of the, the wall here around. There's a little rock that pops out. That's where I'm starting it. And uh, I'm going to come down at an angle a little bit away from the crystal. That's going to be enough to keep the ogres out of cleave range there. And um, let's get another wall here from that blue stuff, whatever that is, <laughs> into... Uh, into this grass here, angled away a little bit. We've got 140 mana left. Let's drop a let's drop a flame burst here. Yeah, that range looks good. That range is enough to uh, hit both walls. And I still got I've got 60 mana left. How about that? So let's do some gas traps in each lane. A little bit of crack and chill. Never hurt anybody. Uh, might slow some things down. I th I think we get, I think we get Sharken, actually, for this. So yeah, we want some gas traps for sure, because they kind of introduce the nightmare enemies slowly to you. The first one being from um, Deeper Well, being the spiders, and I believe it's Sharken for Ancient My. Yep, there we go. There is a Sharken. So these guys want to charge your walls here. Um, basically, what we want to do, what we can do, you can shoot them. Um, when they're getting up and getting ready to charge and you'll stun them so they get this little animation where there's uh, they're kind of stunned a bit and uh, it stops them it prevents them from charging they want to charge your wall they want to charge right through it and that's something they can do they can just run right through your wall you don't want that so now everything's gassed I guess I'll just deal the damage myself here whoa <laughs> almost died uh, I'm just gonna take him out myself here yeah the, the gas is um, the hard counter to Sharken. This guy's charging in here. I don't know. He just ran into a wall. But if they if they charged close enough to um, the wall, the gas trap would trigger, and it would stop him cold. It would stop him dead in his tracks, and he would not be able to charge the wall. That Sharken went down there. So that's why I like um, the gas traps here. Wave one, we just so happen to have enough mana. You could always stop them manually if you wanted to, but given that we had 60 mana after that tower went down. I just decided gas traps would be good. They are the absolute hard counter to um, Sharken, so you do want them. Got some fire immune enemies here. The uh, flame bursts aren't going to bother attacking them, so we've got more mana here now. I think I'll go with I'll go with a few more. Well, let's get some auras down first. Let's get an ensnare. And a strength drain down. I think we've got enough. Plenty of mana to do both lanes here. Ensnare. Yeah, ensnare and strength drain here to uh, help protect our walls a little bit more. And I guess we can do... Let's get some explosive traps going here in the lanes as well. Do I have time for this explosive trap? Maybe? Perfect. Okay. Um, I hope that gets triggered. <laughs> we'll see. Um, maybe not. Uh, I think I want to move that one in, actually. But 
Uh, we've got more sharken and more enemies coming down here now. I'm gonna hang out and wait. This flame burst is not not really doing a whole lot right now. 15 enemies killed. That's not too bad, I guess. The explosive traps are out quite a bit farther. Um, wow, he's gonna take some shots at my wall there. That archer. Uh, yeah, he's stunned. The gas being a hard stop for them. Another shark in here. Okay, enemies, it looks like, yeah, they are triggering the explosive trap there, so that's a good spot. Yeah, I didn't really, I didn't really rehearse this part. Uh, I'm just kind of coming in. I have a rough idea of what I want to do, but uh, in terms of specific placements and exactly what goes where, I'm, uh, I'm kind of winging it here. I, I do like these auras in the wall, in the, uh, in the lanes here to slow everything down even more, and uh, you know, so a charging shark and at full speed is going to get stopped. And uh, the ensnare is going to make sure that happens. Also, the gas is going to help out with that. Uh-oh. Crystal took damage here. I guess an archer took a shot. Not really sure what happened. No big deal. Not worried about that. So, uh, it looks like we've got a few more enemies left here. For some reason, at the end, it's always kobolds that have come out. They, they hit you with a few kobolds at the very end. I guess an archer popped the shot off on my wall there. Got close enough to the wall to take a shot at the reset timers. All my traps let him through, maybe? I'm assuming that's what happened. Not really sure, don't really care. Uh, not nearly enough to make us lose by any stretch. So I'm gonna drop, oh, got a level up there. I'm gonna drop a couple more flame bursts here. And uh, I guess I'll get some buff beams and reflects down as well. Uh, three flame bursts, why not? And then I'll do, well, I'll do the, I'll do the buff beam first. 5D or 4DU buff beam. Perfect. And do I get the reflect wall down? I think I do. Yes, I do. Perfect. And uh, I'll save the rest of the stuff for later. But uh, for now, we've got a few flame bursts. Lots more damage. That's going to be plenty. Now, the strength drains are going to help out because anything that is fire immune coming through is going to get that immunity stripped away. I'm going to just pop out and repair my explosive traps real quick. I think I want to move that one back. I think it's not in a great place. I think that's maybe why the archer actually managed to, to pop a shot off on my core here. Uh, we'll see. I'm going to move that one back a little bit. Uh, yeah, those sharken. Three flame bursts. That's that's uh, quite a bit of firepower. So We've got plenty of damage going into our lanes. Lots of mana here now. Bunch of cobalts coming in. Popping on the walls there. I think I'm, yeah, I think I'm plenty far away from the walls here with the crystal for the cobalts to, to not do splash damage. You know, you could always move the wall out a little bit if you find that you're taking any kind of splash damage here. I think the shot on the core was an archer. Just got right up on the wall there. Probably what it was. That's my guess. I guess I'll, I'll go back and watch the footage and, and see if I can figure it out. I don't think I was near the wall. So, plenty more mana here now. Got lots of mana. Um, still plenty of DU to play with here. I'm going to sell this, and I'm going to move it back a little bit. And um, I think what I'll do next is I'll just get some buff beams on these walls. Why not? And then we can buff everything. We can buff the walls, auras, and traps for 40 DU each. That'll be nice. And uh, we'll have some more DU to play with here now. 14 DU. I don't really know what to do with it, if I'm being honest. I don't think we need much more than this. I can throw some more traps in the lanes for a little more damage. Um, we could do electric ores. We could do inferno traps. Uh, we could do proton beams. You could do anything, really. You know, up to you. Look at the spider sneaking around the back here. Maybe we need a couple more reflect walls, but I didn't get webbed, so that's fortunate. Whoop. See, that's what can happen. See the, see the webs on the towers? That's what can happen there to your towers, um, and then they slow down. Their, their attack speed is much, much slower. So I think what I'll do is uh, I'll just wall the rest of this off from the spiders here. I'll get some walls, I'll reflect walls behind them as well, I guess. Do a little triangle maybe, and then uh, uh, I'll throw some, I'll throw some infernos in the lanes, and um, a healing aura, I guess we can call it there. That sounds like a complete build to me. I'll throw an upgrade on these explosive traps. Not a ton of fortify on my trap hunters here. So they need a little help. Uh, the gas rip. So that's uh, <laughs> the charging shark can do quite a bit of damage there. You'll want to stay out of their way. 
guess I'll, I'll repair the uh, gas traps here. Losing some charges. The strength drains. Looking all right. I'll repair them as well. You know, it's nice not having hardcore on because you can just kind of move around and not worry about getting hit by something. Not really a big deal if you die. And in terms of if you're just progressing through the campaign, I don't think there's any reason to, to do it with hardcore on. I think it's better to keep it off. You know, I just I took a random shot there. No idea what it was. Probably an archer or something. I have no idea. But it doesn't matter because I'm already back in. So, uh, yeah, I think hardcore off is just fine to uh, to be a little more careless in the lanes and whatnot. That way, you know, you don't have to sweat it if you die. Let's check on the walls here a little bit. Just repair up some. Yeah, they're looking good. The buff beams on the walls help out quite a bit. Uh, that armor is surprisingly effective at helping them absorb even more damage. I'll pump some damage into the lanes here with my staff. Help speed things along a little bit. Got three enemies left. All of them over there, and they're dead. All right. We've got some time here to drop some more stuff. I guess, what was I doing here? I'm going to do some Infernos. Out in the lane a little further. Just to add some more damage to kill some uh, some of the smaller, uh, weaker enemies. And I'll try to get down some Reflect Walls here as well. Uh, they don't need to be anything special. I don't even know if I have spiders on that side. Eh. Not the best placement, but they'll block some, uh, they'll block some spider webs. Got some more stuff in the inventory. That's nice. I think the victory chest gives you the best stuff. Yeah, there we go. Locked. So, uh, definitely want to wall them in. They'll walk in and take some shots at your towers here, too. Um, you can always just attack them and, uh, get them out of there. I guess I should upgrade some stuff, too, shouldn't I? Uh, I got webbed. Everything got webbed. So, um, I'll get these spiders out of here with my weapon, and, uh, then I'll upgrade the towers. Ooh, almost lost one there. Fortunately, I'm on the apprentice. I could always replace it if I needed to. I'll upgrade this stuff. I'll, uh, I'll upgrade the buff beam. Yeah, I'll throw a little more. Whoops, I think I upgraded the reflect wall there. I'll throw some more levels on the, uh, these, these flame bursts. So oh, it's the last wave. It's wave five. I'm over here planning out the rest of my build here. I've got four DU left over. So you can see here, um, you know, I'm, I'm playing rather haphazardly. And as long as you have a, a, a somewhat concise build and hardcore turned off, you can progress through the campaign pretty easily. Um, you know, even if I lost a tower or two. Whoops, I lost a tower. I lost two towers. Look at all this stuff. It's gone. What am I going to do? Uh, you know, you're fine. Uh, it's not that big of a deal. You've got some damage in the lanes. You've got buff beams. You've got walls. Uh, you're looking good. If you're on your apprentice, you can always slap down towers uh, willy-nilly if you like. You know, we might have an ogre coming down here. There we go. So I'll just slap a DST down. Why not? A little more damage never hurt anybody. Uh, DSTs prioritize nightmare enemies, fun fact. So they will prioritize Sharkin and uh, Jin and Copter Ogres and all that stuff uh, when you get them. I guess I'll throw another Flame Burst down. Why not? We've got some space here. Um, you know, if you lose stuff, don't sweat it, uh, especially if it's a tower, because you can always just replace it. You've got a DPS weapon, you can deal with whatever was doing damage to the tower. If it was a spider, you can see I got in a bit of a hairy situation there with the spiders, but I was able to kill them myself, and that'll be the victory. So let's just pop this chest and see what we get here. Boom. Oh, I'm level 60 now. How about that? So we've got some, oh, a level 30 weapon. That might be an, uh, that might be an upgrade. But uh, yeah, you can see the uh, the items get better. You've got legendary quality gear here. You've got level 30 um, max upgrades. But that's, yeah, that's Ancient Minds for you. So let's head back to the tavern and we'll talk about what to do from here. All right, we're back in the tavern. Now, what I'll do is I'll put those builds together on the planner and leave links to them in the description. I'll be a little more concise, probably include a darkness trap for the Ancient Minds to help out with the spiders. But from here, you now have ancient minds unlocked for nightmare survival and that's kind of the next step in terms of gear progression that is the next stop you want to click hardcore for that and just start farming just try it push out as far as you can the farther you go out the better gear you get it's a great way to gear up for the rest of nightmare if you gear up here you're going to be able to charge through the rest of the campaign no problem so i've got a wave 23 start build on my channel and i'll leave a link to that 
in the description. It goes through a Wave 1 setup as well. Also, Havericks and Juice Bags have good videos for the Ancient Mines from a Wave 1 start. All of them use low stats, so feel free to check out any of those videos for ideas on what to do. Links will be in the description. Something else that I suggest you do from here as you're farming in the Ancient Mines is that you create some new heroes. So I think it's wise to, at this point in the game, create a squire and a new huntress and monk. And uh, the squire will be your tank. You can uh, put gear on him that's got attack and fortify on it and ideally skill and boost as well. And uh, he can tank the bosses for you. And uh, your huntress can be your DPS Huntress, you can slap a, a minigun or a, a paintball gun on her, or get a disintegrator from the uh, boss victory chest on the alchemical laps. She's going to be great for killing copter ogres, shooting down copters from a distance, especially to get through the lava mines, that'll be really handy. And uh, attack would be her main stat. For any of these heroes, for, for both the Squire and the DPS Huntress, vitality, attack, skill, and boost, that's what you want to see on the gear. And um, for your monk, he'll be, he can be a boost monk. So you can put a speedy gemstone on him and uh, put points into skill on him. He's going to do a better job boosting your towers than your apprentice would. It'll be easier to boost towers on him. He'll also boost your auras. So uh, yeah, he's a, great, he's a great hero to play during the waves to boost, say, a stack of towers and some auras and whatnot. But that's what I would suggest you do next. Start farming the Ancient Mines. Nightmare Hardcore Survival, create a few new heroes somewhere in the process and get them to 70. They instantly become useful at 70. You can hit pause from leveling with them after that. Just gear them up as they hit level 70 and they will instantly become useful and obviously you'll be upgrading your other characters along the way. And that's going to be a great start to Nightmare, a really strong start to mid game. That is, I think, your best bet for proceeding from here but that's going to do it for me here now um, my uh, discord server is linked in the description if you have any more specific questions obviously leave a comment but if you want more direct access to me in any way um, or you want to meet some people to play with we've got a nice community going there link to the discord server is in the description i do also stream on twitch and a link to that will be down below as well but that's going to do it for me here now thank you so much for watching